pray to Shri Krishna, dear Shri Krishna, please protect me and give me the strength to follow your instructions, to nobly tread this path of spiritual life, and to please our Guru Maharaj, Srila Gurudev, in this life. If we can do Guru Seva, everything is successful. Gurave Gauda Chandraya Radhikaya Tadalaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namaha. Who wants to say the verse? So we can remember this as this is an instruction Krishna is giving us, but it's also we can pray with this verse and pray to Krishna to give us the power to follow his instruction. To not be cowardly in the face of obstacles to always be compassionate to others and to try to help them. Krishna is instilling the Kshatriya mood in Arjuna, but Kshatriya does not mean to harm others, it means to help others in need. Kshatriya at the same time means to cause injury, Kshatriya, to cut. So there's different ways of cutting. Uh, the sadhus also cut. When Gurudev was talking about Srila Gorgovinda Goswami Maharaj, he said, Sante Vaisya Chindanti. The sadhu is cut through the anartas in the heart. But this is because they are expert surgeons. The most, what's the most famous verse glorifying Guru that we know, that we chant every day before class? Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya. Does anybody know what Shalakaya means? Shalakaya means a scalpel, a tool that is used to remove a cataract. So Guru is a doctor who uses a tool to remove the cataract of avidya, ignorance of our true identity, our true spiritual purpose in life. So a, a knife in the hand of a murderer and in the hand of an expert surgeon, one is killing, one is saving. So Kshatriya, true Satriya, Krishna is instilling this fighter spirit within us. But that fighter spirit should be used as a pr protector to protect oneself, the garden of one's own heart, where Sri Guru and Radha Krishna are present, to protect that and try to protect those who are weaker, not to try to cause harm. And in the doing of that, we may be called to task to do things which we do not want to do. Doing that, we should always take guidance from higher authorities to understand the proper course of action, not that we act on our own whim. <clears throat> when very difficult things come to us, we should not act rashly, impetuously. Prabhuji loves to tell a story of a mother who had a mongoose that she would has it as a pet. And one day she was going out to the wash and she was going to be gone for some while, and she wanted the mongoose to take care of her. She had a baby infant. And the mongoose was in the mentality, yes, I have to protect the baby. The mother came back after 20, 30 minutes, and she saw the mongoose covered in blood outside the house, waiting to see her, like jumping up and down. And she became very angry, thinking that the mongoose had killed her child. So she picked up a stone and beat it to death. She entered into her house. She saw her child perfectly safe with a dead snake at its feet. A snake had come, the mongoose had killed the snake, protected the baby, but the mother acted without thinking properly, without figuring out the situation properly, and she killed that person who had protected her child. So therefore, at certain times in life when we may think someone is at fault, we should be careful not to judge too rashly or prematurely. At the same time, I was reading this morning, studying, Gurudev writes in his commentary about what does it mean to be a Kshatriya. Kshatriya dharma is Gora dharma. Gora, not Goranga, but Gor with the H. Gora, I believe. means very fearsome. And in that pursuit of dharma, one may have to kill one's brother even. And that is not a dharma, if it is so required. That is not, that is not a common occurrence necessarily. But Krishna is telling Arjuna, do not be impotent. And so that's an important meditation for us. Krishnas Kaviraj Goswami, he was ready to give up his brother because he was inimical to Lord Nityananda. And so at once he gave up association with his brother, left home without even shoes on his feet or bags packed. 
he just left home at once because his brother had insulted, offended Lord Nityananda. So he left at once, and by doing so, he received the, the mercy of Lord Nityananda and Sri Radha Madhav, Radha Govinda Gopinath Madan Mohan. He received their darshan and full blessings. So in the pursuit of our dharma, we should not, we have to understand what does it mean to be one-pointed in devotion. This is a lesson Krishna gives us coming soon. Ananya, to be one-pointed. And he says this many times in the Gita. People think, what is this one-pointedness? Ananyas chintayantumam. One-pointedness. Krishna says very soon, coming up. Buddhaya vyavisayanam. Those who are not one-pointed, they never achieve anything of true worth because they're many branched. They're trying to do everything. They're trying to be devoted to everyone. But Krishna says, Ananya, be one-pointed. So sometimes, you know, if a difficult choice comes where we have to choose between what's the most sacred thing in our life and someone who may have been very dear to us but who has become completely opposed to that, we may have to choose and take sides. It doesn't mean that we are necessarily ready to fight them, but we have to choose. Do we want Guru's side or do we want, if someone is family member, how to deal with it? It's not, Gurudev would say, you should be loving and compassionate to everyone. I remember listening to a verse, uh, a class Gurudev gave in Hindi. And he said that you should be very sweet and affectionate to your family. Very kind and affectionate and loving. At the same time, Lochan Das Thakur says, Jede se nitai nai, se de se ne jhabo, nitai vumuke ar, muka na heribo. Those who are opposed to my beloved Guru Pad Padma, my Nityananda, I will not look at their face. I will not go to that place where they are not honored and welcome. So these are important things for us to consider. But at the same time, we should give people a chance and not act rashly like the story of the mother and the mongoose. So we will go forward. We did a whole section on these, these very important verses. Now Krishna is going to talk all about the existence and the nature of the soul. And this is a very important section of the Bhagavad Gita that goes about 15 verses. However, this is the introductory knowledge in the Bhagavad Gita. This is not the highest level of knowledge. There are different levels of knowledge, and the soul knowledge is considered the introduction. So it's something very interesting to see that those who believe that in uh, reductive materialism, for them, they ridicule the idea of transcendent consciousness above matter. And they'll debate on this endlessly. But Krishna does not waste time arguing with those who are inimical or atheistic or materialistic. Krishna gives different arguments, but mostly he just states as fact. And then afterwards, everyone can debate ad infinity, ad infinitum. So Krishna... He teaches now very soon about the soul. In verse 7, Arjuna takes shelter and surrenders to Krishna. It's a very important verse, but there's so many verses, so people can memorize them as much as they want in their own time. We'll try to keep it brief, and we're going to memorize one verse today about the soul, and then we're going to go forward to buddhi yoga. Buddhi yoga means yoga with proper intelligence, properly applied intelligence. Following, we should not look at how much work we are doing, just idle work, but how much we are achieving. Meaning, Krishna is saying, apply your intelligence properly so that you don't just run around doing things with no proper fruit, with no proper re spiritual result. But first, Arjuna takes shelter of Krishna, accepts that he is bewildered, and becomes his disciple. So showing the importance of Guru. So verse 7 it's a very important verse showing the importance of the guru-disciple relationship. Krishna has instructed him so far a little bit, but Arjuna is still arguing up to this point. Krishna says, you should fight, but Arjuna says, no, if I fight, I'll be killing my gurus. How will I enjoy this kingdom even if it was at the expense of all of my kinsmen? But now Arjuna is surrendering and saying, I am your disciple. Please accept me. We cannot just say, I am the disciple. Like Ekalavya and Dronacharya. We cannot just say, I am your disciple. Guru must accept us. And we must accept his discipline. 
So Arjuna says, Yat Shreya, please teach me what is the most auspicious thing. In this life there is Preya and Shreya. Preya means immediate gratification, Shreya means ultimate good. Preya means, I, you know, I always want to eat something, but I have diabetes, I'm always just eating sugar, eating sugar, and I'm getting sick. Ultimately it's very bad for me. So it means I should learn how to regulate myself and inquire into the highest good. So Arjuna says, now I am inquiring into the highest good. Yet Shreya Shanishtitam Bruhitan me Shishastihang Sadimang Tang Prapanam. He says, I do not know what to do. I am confused. Please dispel my lamentation. So then Sanjaya says, after speaking these words, Arjuna, subduer of his foes, said to Krishna, O Govinda, I shall not fight, and fell silent. This is verse 9. So on one hand, he's surrendering, but he's still kind of hedging his bets a bit. He's saying, I don't want to fight, but I'm willing to hear you out, basically. <laughs> so verse 10. <clears throat> At that time, Rishikesh Sri Krishna. Why is he called Rishikesh? Rishikesh is the master of the senses. Without his mercy and his power, we cannot act or do anything. So he smiles, which is very interesting. Prahasan, Krishna is happy. <laughs> when others are sad, no, Krishna is still smiling. In one sense, Krishna is encouraging also through smiling. Meaning to say, don't be too down on yourself. It's going to work out. Even when it, life seems the most difficult, God can be there hiding behind the clouds, smiling. <laughs> Prahasan means to be happy, actually. Prahasan, Iva Bharata. Krishna is smiling. He is the master of all mystics. So Krishna is not in any doubt or in any confusion. Krishna already knows the outcome. So this is a drama, a beautiful leela that is transpiring. In some pastimes, Krishna accepts to be covered by his internal potency, Yoga Maya. And it's like he doesn't know what's going to happen. But this time it's like Krishna is smiling. He knows the outcome. <laughs> and he's smiling as if to say, do not worry. In life, especially when as devotees we come to so many difficulties, we can just, if we can just bide the time out and focus more on Harinam and praying to Gurudev, this time will pass like a storm. And again, sunny skies will come out. And if we are fully detached and surrendered from the results of act our activities, Krishna teaches us, Niskam Karma Yoga, be detached from the results. Do your best, but be detached from the results. If you can do that, then we will not be disturbed when outcomes come in our life for which we are not desirous. We will be equipoised. So Krishna now will begin to speak. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha, verse 11, you can read along. Asocha nanva socha stvam pragyavadangshta basase gatasun agatasungscha nanu sochanti panditaha.